Imperial Squad Agent. In the wake of the Death Star's disruption, the Empire created the Inferno Squad to ensure that Imperial secrets will remain safe. Their fierce loyalty to the Empire and exceptional skills in both aerial and ground combat set the squad apart from the rank and the file troopers. Hello! Welcome to Centaurian's Corner, and today we're reviewing the Inferno Squad Agent from Battlefront 2. Now, I picked up this box figure from Star Action Toys for £7.95. That is such a steal for this character. She normally goes for about, well, I say he, she. It looks more of a he, because it's definitely not Iden Versio, unfortunately. But for £7.95, this is an exclusive figure that just looks the mutt's nuts. So, I mean, Battlefront 2, I enjoyed it. The When it first came out, it was a little bit, you know, the old sort of loot crate stuff was going on. Um, but if you go back to that game now, I can assure you it's a completely different game. Actually, it runs superbly. It's really a nice game. And I really enjoyed the storyline, and I had all the DLC as well for it. And I enjoyed Iden Versio's kind of sort of like role for it, and I really enjoyed Luke Skywalker as well, the way that he portrayed in it. And to be honest, it was a better reminiscent of all the characters that I loved than better than Last Jedi. But, you know, each their own. We can't have it all, I guess. But here he, she is. Um, with a nice sort of like front and the side. We've got the kind of window. We've got the uh, gun here. And we've got a bit of colour as well in this sort of pencil drawing. Normally it's just completely grey. It doesn't matter what colour they are. So we've got this nice kind of bit here, which is pretty cool. They haven't got a number on the side because they're exclusive. And on the back, we've got the pencil drawing and the bio. And then obviously Inferno Squad Agent with Inferno just written in the black there. So guys and girls, without further ado, let's crack this bad one open. So here they are in their blister pack. We just get one accessory, which is a standard E11 blaster. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all they kind of need, really. So uh, what we do, we just grab them out of the blister pack, and I'll take them away, take some photos, which I'll show at the end of the video, and um, we just go for some first impressions. And I haven't got a TIE Fighter pilot yet, so this will be my first time sort of kind of handling one, I guess. Yeah, just seems pretty cool. Just seems very sort of like tight. Um, feels very rigid at the moment, so it'd be nice to see how this one poses, to be honest. It, it feels a bit of a different plastic. Feels sort of like a like a hollowness. So it doesn't feel as heavy or robust. So, but the helmet looks fantastic. So uh, I'll go away now and we'll just take some pictures and uh, I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so welcome back. So I've taken away, done a few photos, and uh, yeah, to be honest, it's not a bad figure. I think it's, we more go on the looks rather than the sort of uh, posability and articulation on this one, unfortunately. But um, nonetheless, we'll go through articulation, we go through a sculpt, and also we go through accessories. And we'll start off with the accessories, and she comes with the one, which is just an E11 blaster. It's just there. It's done in a black with a sort of silver wash. But it just seems a bit weird that they haven't actually um, painted the inside of the gun there silver. So, uh, yeah, apart from that, you know, good sculpt. It's just the basic E11, which all the other ones come with. And that just fits in a holster that they have on the back there. That just slides straight in. 
and also fits in their trigger hand on the right hand side and that just fits just nice just like that so with that we'll go over the articulation and it's a bit sort of strange really with the um, articulation and um, I suppose it goes with a bit of sculpt as well but um, it's kind of like she's or he she it's like a mixed gender because she's not as wide as the others I could always say it's she because obviously I keep thinking it's Iden and Versio but it's not but um, yeah it feels very narrow and it's very sort of thin compared to male kind of figures but also in the other side it's taller and thicker than female figures and um, so we find that there's a little bit of articulation with the arms and stuff that it gets quite hindered really but um anyway we go through it so we've got the head and that can turn sort of left and right but obviously it gets hindered by these and they do just pop out but um they can just sl simply just slide straight back in um and with the head they can look up and then we can look down but what I find with this is actually where the ball joint is so far up in the head you can actually sort of slide the head back and forth so if you slide it back and then look up you get a further range on it you would have to pop these back in and if you slide it forward and then down you actually get a further sort of look in there as well and you just simply pop those there okay so on the shoulder comes up to there just a standard rotation at the shoulder we've got rotation at the elbow and also we've got a 90 degree bend we've got a rotation at the hand and then we've got on the hinge and then the ab crunch is not really there to be honest to be honest there's not even an ab crunch at all but we've got a rotation and then we've got to the legs and they can go this wide We've got an upper five rotation, we've got a double jointed knee, and we've got the rocker, and we've got a pivot. And we can kick this far forward, and we can kick this far back. So yeah, it just comes a little bit hinder on the um, articulation, like trying to get them in a sort of a good sort of like pose. It, it kind of sort of like really sort of, um, it's quite hard to do because we've got this sort of like box bit at the front and because they're a bit of a smaller figure they don't really sort of physically get their arms all around it to put it into like a a nice sort of gun ready pose so um just for instance i have picked up the 80 what well, 80 driver and so we can do a size comparison as well next one before we go into the um the looks of the figure but i just wanted to show it off because it's more of the articulation really so it's neither female neither is it male because of the size of the figure and um, yeah it's just with the arms it's just this is where it just comes around where this one can hold it up you can get that kind of sort of gun over there bring it down and it, it, there's no sort of odds to it you know you could easily get to it unfortunately with this one uh, as, you, as soon as you put it in bend that arm up and what you want to sort of bring it around and we get the gun into place you're kind of sort of stuck in that kind of sort of position because you can't really bring that arm around or down or around it's just you always kind of get into this sort of pose unfortunately so you know when you can have something like this because it's got the arm length and this one hasn't it, that's where you sort of start struggling with it unfortunately and you can sort of see the sort of size and the height and also sort of like the broadness of this figure as well but I mean I suppose TIE Fighter Pilots always have been a bit slim when they're running around on a New Hope on the Death Star I actually kind of thought they were female anyway because they're very slender but uh, we go for that we go for the looks and uh, yeah I mean it's a perfect representation of uh, an alpha squad obviously it's not uh, Ida Universio because I haven't got the pauldron part on the side here but um, yeah so with the helmet we got 
the sort of Inferno squad sort of look here. And then we've got the Imperial cog on this side. Got the red eyes, which is really nice. They really look glossy and they're sort of so deep inset as well. Obviously we're moving, there's no sort of bit on this side, but we've got the red marks here. And that's kind of reminiscent on the whole figure as well. Uh, just taking a, a step back. So there's no black bits on here. Uh, no, sorry, no red on here. And down his arm, there's no red. And down on this side, there's no red. But as soon as we turn it onto this side, it looks completely different. You know, so we've got the red at the top, red down the side, and all the way down. So, yeah, I mean, we can look at the chest box, and it's got all the buttons, all the doobries on there. And uh, not too bad. I've got a tiny little bit where the red has kind of bled off that button there, but it only really shows up on camera. Around the back. So I've got this little red mark here, but I kind of thought it was a bit of paint blodge, but it's so sort of finely done that actually it must be like a a bit of detail on there. Well, I'm going to leave it on there anyway, but uh, yeah. The whole back plate's just completely gloss. And that just follows to the front as well and we've got the belt as well which is on a bit sort of a, a bit harder plastic a bit cheaper plastic and uh, with the nice holster but there's not really any sort of nice detailing on there that we don't get like with the um, imperial officers we get that kind of sort of leverette look on here it's literally just pure plastic but we've got all the ruffles we've got like the com link on the arm we've got the gloss kind of gloves and uh, we go down to the bottom and we've just got the ruffles again for the undersuit and going into nice sort of glossier boots again. We've got the belt buckles and all those other parts on there. So really, I mean, it's really quite a nice figure to look at. It's like the details and all that are perfect. Unfortunately, it just suffers with that articulation, which, to be honest, is kind of like 70% of Black Series at the moment. Um, so the other thing I thought about this is also, I mean... I know straight away a lot of people go do an Iden Versio custom, but because of the size of the body, it's not simply just a head swap or anything like that. You would actually probably need to remake a whole entire figure, to be honest. So I've got this is sort of a Jin Erso, which is the normal size of a female character because they always seem to be really diddy. I've taken the head off already and. Um, yeah, she's just quite small compared. I don't think she's going to stand. But um, so with this one as well, we've got the um, ball plug on the head, and it's quite a, quite a size, it's quite a big ball joint here. But uh, if I just tip that back, and we can just place a head on for a female head, um, you know, before any kind of custom. But we can see the size is completely not right at all so um unfortunately that's not going to work either but um you know i kind of like it you know maybe i could make a custom pauldron instead just to put on the side so it's kind of like an inferno squad person before Iden took over but um yeah it's like a really good figure so i mean at the moment we've got look at star action toys uh, and that is 7.95 so literally you can't go wrong Action fig on the shelf, brilliant. Shame about the posability. You know, a good one for the collection just to get that kind of exclusivity on that shelf there of the Imperials and that kind of cool sort of commando sort of person. And um, yeah, I mean, if you're, you're a collector, you're going to get it anyway. So, uh, guys, that's been my review of Inferno Squad Agent. I hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below, follow me on Instagram. You can do all the other stuff that we normally do to follow the channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye.